welcome, welcome, welcome back. Birdman Drug Stories. Just got the, the new candle, Equita LLC. I always slap a picture of my dead homie right there. Johnny, rest in peace, homie. We love you. Keep your memory down here always, buddy. Every time I use one of my candles from our company, I always put a, a Johnny label on it. I feel like he guides me. My life, my, you know, our, our candle company, fiance and I. But I don't think you motherfuckers are here to hear all that. You might be. I know why you motherfuckers are here. Place that up there. Rest in peace, homie. It's as real as it gets right there, boy. It's as real as it gets. We're going to dive right in. All right. So, today's Birdman a Drug Story episode is a special one for you. We're going to do it right there in the candlelight behind me. Today's Birdman Drug Story goes as follows. It's going to be a little bit, something a little different tonight. You motherfuckers have heard a lot of the war stories. Not all of them, but a lot of them. You guys have heard my darkest and most trying and difficult times. You guys have heard the numerous occasions where I almost died, whether it was getting stabbed literally in the back with a butterfly knife and through my lung. Doctor said about two inches from my heart. Outside a bar fight, that story is on my channel. Or whether it was a, a five day coma in Easter Mass, stories on the channel too. And that's just two examples of. Many examples, you know. Sorry, get the background back up there, right? Get the background back there. Sorry about that. We'll dive right in. So you guys have heard already the worst of times that I had. You know what I mean? Most of it's on the channel. I still have some that I've been holding. You know, like the emergency bag. If you're watching the channel, you know about the emergency bag, the, the stash bag, break in case of emergency only. Or if you get a bunch of blow with your buddies and you're all throwing down, I'd always sneak a little bit out for myself. I guess now that I don't do that shit anymore, I can let you guys know. Any opportunity I had to pinch that Coke bag when I went to the bathroom, I would. And I did. But that's not why you're here we're here for the drug stories. And now that I've told you the darkest, most trying times, most of them, I got some that I've been holding, like I said, with the emergency bag waiting to release. I was waiting for the channel to grow, but I got a hell of a series that's going to be coming up. Some real crazy shit that I've been holding, holding on to to release at the right time. But since I put the war stories and all the wreckage and everything out here, it's only fair and it's only right that I put the other side of the coin. Today's drug story is going to be about what it's like once you do get it together. And if you guys are just starting off to try and get clean, I'm going to tell you what I did. And my belief is this. Whatever it is that keeps you away from the dope, Especially the dope, the opiates, the coke, whatever it is that you do. This meth is taking over the world. Thank God I didn't get into fucking meth. I'd probably still be on a fucking bender. I'm just gonna tell you guys what I did, and maybe it can, uh, you know, help somebody. I'm always here to help. You know, drop something in the comments or whatnot. Advice. I exchange phone numbers with lots of my subscribers, emails, Facebook, all that shit. Today's story going to be a little bit different as my fucking neighbors are being loud outside. Good old apartment complex living. I'll have a house soon, I know it. In a couple years I'll have my first house. God willing. I never thought I'd have a house before. I never thought I'd have anything before. And been able to 
fight up from the depths of all the drug stories you've heard on this channel so far. And like I said, many near death experiences that went on. Comas, overdoses, stabbings, getting jumped, getting beat up, going to jail, beating up my roommate, multiple arrests. So much of the shit is on the channel of, of the wreckage. And those times were hard, don't get me wrong. Those were extremely hard times. I'll tell you what, once you get it together, the times, they can remain difficult. They can remain hard, you know what I'm saying? Later on when you do get it together and it was extremely hard to get clean. I was always, not always, most of the time I was able to get clean. My problem then became, how do I stay off the shit? I could never do it. Well, now I think I can speak on it because Memorial Day weekend, like you motherfuckers know, will be five years off alcohol and off of drugs, real drugs. I'll put that caveat, real drugs. If you smell what the bird is cooking. No, it's not meth. It's like, a little bit of pot, which is not recommended. I, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody in the beginning stages. You have to, or what happened for me, you don't have to. You don't have to do shit. What I did that worked for me is I took what worked for me from the programs, from AA, from NA. I took what I agreed with in those programs. I put that shit, and they, you know, all the big book, like thumpers would be like, put this in your toolbox and you'll always have tools and some shit like that. Fuckers are always talking about toolboxes and shit, but. It makes sense. Just take what you want from the program. The main thing is not to pick up a real drug. And that was what I was in it for. I was in it to not be a dope fiend. I was in it to not be a, a, a downright degenerate drug act. I was in it to not keep ending up homeless. I was in this shit to clean up, to get my parents respect for like the first time ever. Because 15 years of drug addiction, that motherfucking respect is long gone. I'd say out the window, that shit's been out the window. And it ain't coming back unless you make some serious changes. I've been lucky enough to be able to make those changes. The best relationship I've ever had with my folks now, which is good. You know, they're elderly. So there was a time where I thought, there was a time I thought I'd never get the opportunity to make amends with my parents. I'm not talking like an official AANA big book amends. I did do the steps. I didn't do them all, but I did the steps. And we did most of the steps. Me and my sponsor when I was in the sober house. Um... And I got a lot out of it. I got a lot out of it. Uh, burying wreckage and pain from the past is always was very helpful. Things I held in for years and years that I might have been like ashamed of or whatnot. Big reason why I do the channel. I don't run from this shit no more. I did what I did and it was no fucking secret what I was doing. One of my many reasons for relapsing a lot in my previous failed attempts at getting my fucking life together... Some of the reason why those failed attempts continued to happen was once I got clean, I tried to run away whew, like a fucking crackhead on the way to meet the plug. I tried running away from the fact that I was a drug addict, that I was a junkie, that I had been homeless before, that I used to pick the cigarette butts out of the ashtrays. Like you motherfuckers know, I always used to say that I would do. I'd be like the highlight of my day was half a Newport. I'm like, oh, they only smoked half. Let me get that shit. Go grab the fucking Newport out of the ashtray. Make sure no one's looking. If they see ya. I didn't give a fuck. I was homeless. Had nothing. I was in it for half a Newport. Even if it was soggy on a rainy day. As long as that shit lit up and I could get a hit. I'll take a hit of it. You know, what I used to look forward to was. You know, decent sized cigarette butts in the ashtrays at your local gas station. But me running away from all this wreckage and all the. All the fucking drug stories I already have on the channel. They're, listen, there's plenty fucking more of them that are going to go on here. Because I got drug stories. I'd say for days. I got drug stories for years. You know, you're a, a drug user addict for over 15 years of using and abusing drugs every single fucking day. You're going to add up a lot of stories. I'm not proud of the stories, but when I used to run away from them. When I used to, um, when I used to try to act like it never happened or... Just trying to run away from the wreckage and the bad things I had done or all the bad shit about being a junkie and the stigmas and all that that came with it. It never did me any favors. It would really just lead me back and push me back to relapse. And then once I did start relapsing, then I really got down and depressed. Man, there's not many things that are worse feeling than you know a relapse on your drug of choice, which mine at the end was heroin. And here's the thing, when you're fucking... 
puffing your chest out that you're not on heroin anymore and that you've cleaned up and you're fucking blasting all over social media. You know, I did that shit all the time. I still kind of do it. When you're doing all that shit, be aware that if you relapse, all the shit that you're putting out there, people are, for one, going to be like, oh, I knew he wasn't going to make it. Where's that inspirational post from last week? He's back on a fucking bender. He's back on a run. But not really so much that aspect of it, as more so the aspect of it that when you relapse and you do all that shit, beating your chest out and trying to make yourself feel good, that's what it's all about. That's why we, us drug acts, we do the social media posts, 32 minutes clean, blessed, shit like that, you know, 17 days, 2 hours and 3 seconds clean, I can't believe how much my life has changed, and like it really maybe hasn't changed all that much, but you want to put it out there that you're no longer that drug addict piece of shit that people have come to know and hate, so you put it out there, but be careful when you do shit like that, because if you do relapse... And I know this from personal first-hand experience. When you do fuck up, it makes the pain that much greater. It makes the struggle that much harder. It makes getting past and over the relapse and back on the right track that much harder to do. Because you don't want to go back with your tail tucked between your legs like, I'm here to get my white key tag. White key tag is like your first day clean or whatever. Uh... Or your 24-hour coin would be AA, would be a 24-hour coin. You don't want to be going up there again, your 24-hour coin, again, talking about, I, I don't know, it's just, I thought it was going to be different, and here's how I, here's how I kind of, I went off track, and, and they started giving the excuses about why they fucked up. Why you fucked up is because you didn't have a solution to your problem, and everybody's solution to a drug problem is a little bit different. As much shit as people get for taking Suboxone, I got friends of mine that have successfully used Suboxone as recommended, don't abuse it, and have been success stories of Suboxone. Now, those are few and far between, but they're out there. They're personal friends of mine, and they've had some success with that. Um, I've had you know marijuana maintenance success stories with that. I'll tell you what, when I got into this getting clean shit to like, you know, make my family proud, get my life back, and get all this stuff, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it because I could never really stay clean before. And then once I started being able to stay clean, or I'm sorry, get clean, I should say. Once I was able to get clean, staying clean became the difficult part because you could always get a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And like I said, beat your beat your chest and puff your chest out on Facebook talking about your fucking, you know, 26 minutes clean and you're touched by God at 26 minutes clean. I'll tell you what. That's not only going to hurt you in the long run, potentially. You have to be able, you have to be able to find what works for you and what works for you is different. One thing that I did not like about the AA and the NA is their cookie cutter program. I was in the shit to stop doing, being a junkie dope fiend. I wasn't in it to like never be able to take a hit of pot again the rest of my life. Now, me personally, I know I can't take a sip of alcohol again the rest of my life. And if I do, there'll be trouble. I got to fucking, yo, I'll be on the block looking for some blow by the time my first drink is halfway gone because I don't really care for alcohol. Alcohol is just an excuse and reason for me to get some blow. And then blow turns into a reason for me to, oh, man, I can't sleep. Looks like I have to get some Xanax or heroin. Oops. And just the cycle goes on and on and on. It's a fucking vicious cycle and very difficult cycle to break. So what I say is use what works for you. Whether, you know, Suboxone has worked for people. I wouldn't recommend it personally because it did not work for me. What worked for me was when I, I found a belief in God. And, you know, people, when they hear that fucking word, the G word, they're like, oh, they'll turn you right off. And I was that way too because I had resentments towards God when I was young and growing up. And only when I found God in the jail so did my life started to turn around and stay turned around because I could always get it together for a little increments of time, but I could never keep it together. You know, so far, so good. You know, knock on wood. So far, so good. Oh, shit, they're coming. Nah, just kidding. Fucking. <laughs> we live near a All right. Fuck the cops. See, if I was geeked right now, I'd be fucking at the window like, oh my God, you hear that? You hear that? You hear those sirens? You hear that? They're coming. Babe, flush everything. Flush the kittens. Flush everything. You know? Um, 
So the point is to just do what works for you and find what works for you and roll with that. And there's going to be haters. I'm sure there's people hating on me. Like, he's talking about being clean. Did you hear he smokes pot every now and again? I mean, it's been working for me. I'm going almost five years. In the first two plus years, I didn't smoke pot then. I was completely 100% clean. So my recommendation is in the beginning for the first year or maybe for the first two years, do the program as much by the book as you can in terms of no substance, including pot, you know, because that's what worked for me is I got off everything for a while. And then when I did decide to start smoking, I prayed on it. I didn't just run out there and grab a bag of pot. I prayed on it multiple times. I talked to my fiance about it, told her, what, you know, what I was thinking, what I was planning and why I was thinking and planning it. And I got the blessing from her and from God that I could smoke pot safely because I had, I had taken my lumps. I had put in my time. I had gotten over two years without anything. I was not in the shit for a life sentence to never take a hit of pot for the rest of my life. I, you know, I took a couple of years off because that's what I needed. And I was willing to sacrifice that because my plans typically didn't work out very well. Um, but I've been rolling with God's plan for the last almost five years. And God's plan far surpasses mine. It always does, and it probably always will. Don't sell yourself short by doing your plan, because if you do your plan, you're selling yourself short of God's plan, which is going to be much greater than you could ever even comprehend. For real, like, I drive a fucking nice-ass Lexus SUV. I used to pick cigarette butts out of ashtrays. I used to be homeless, sleep in the dugout, park benches. Now I have a luxury apartment. I used to date drug addict, horror girlfriends that would be out there fucking anybody with a speckle of drugs or narcotics. Like, hey, suck your dick for those two specks on your on your ID card and the fucking dudes be like, all right. And now I have a loving, caring, and trustworthy fiance. We're getting married soon. So these are all big changes. I can only get to those big changes by doing things a little bit at a time, little by little, building it up, little by little. Getting clean is fucking hard. Staying clean, in my experience, can be even harder. That's why I never miss a day of praying. Like, if I'm driving to work, this is what works for me. It might not work for you, but if you want to know what works for me, if I forget to pray in the morning and say I'm driving on the highway, on the way to work, I'll fucking turn off the radio right then and start praying for God to protect me and guide me through a day. Because every time that I fucking did that for almost five years now, every day I've succeeded in not doing a narcotic. I don't know if pot's considered a narcotic, so, you know, you motherfuckers be in the comments like, pot's a narcotic? Like, I don't know if it is or not. I'm not a fucking lawyer. Um, but I play one on TV. But, uh, they like said the only advice I have for you motherfuckers out there. Find what works for you, do what works for you, and don't sell yourself short. I've been able to do things that I never even dreamed of. I've hit goals I never even thought imaginable. And it's just mind-blowing. It's surreal sometimes. I'm very blessed and I appreciate every day. And I used to wonder how come I survived the coma. Like why? How come I survived and like my boys didn't? You know, some of them. A lot of them. I see now that God took me out of that coma, put me in that jail cell, protected me in that jail, took me out, threw me in that sober house. This has all been God's plan the whole time, even the dark times. It's always been God's plan, even the bad things. When you're like, oh my God, why? When I had no belief in God. You know, if something was going wrong, I would talk to God, even though I had no belief in God. Like, why are you doing this to me, God? Well, you're being a fucking degenerate, drug addict asshole. That's why God's doing that to you. God, why did I end up in jail? Please, God, why did you put me in jail? God put me in jail so he could save my life. Oh, I didn't think that at the time. In hindsight, more will be revealed. Another one of those AANA catchphrases, more will be revealed. Well, more will be revealed. I found out why I survived it. And that is to try to live a life and be an example and try to help out other drug addicts any way that I can. Whether it's from the donations to my old sober house in Springfield, Michael J. Dias house, the MJD house, whether it's through donations. Just try to do something to do something different. You know, through God, I was able to 
get all these beautiful things in my life. And it wasn't easy. But it was worth it. You know?